Hi everyone, it's Vanessa. I'm here to film an exciting video. I saw Books and Lala do a bunch of tier ranking challenges on her channel. I wanted to do one that was based on my 2015 to 2019 favorites. She did something similar where she looked at basically all of her favorites and then ranked them to see if like they're all-time favorites, if like you have to reread them, if you take it back or like what the heck was I thinking. I have now basically double checked that every single book that I marked as a favorite from 2015 to 2019 I have images for so that I could myself go on tier maker and see if these are all-time favorites or if there's any books that I've marked as favorites that I would take back so here we go all right so this is what it starts with you create a template so I'm gonna write 2015 to 2019 favorites category upload a set of images for the tier so this is where i'm going 94 files oh my god <laughs> this is gonna be funny okay so this is what i came up with for the like labels for each row all-time fave i stand by it it's good but and these are ones that i feel like yes i liked but maybe i shouldn't have put on my favorites list i think there's gonna be some like that um, then I need to reread. I'm sure I'll have some of those. And then I take it back. So ones that should not have been on my favorites list, period. I don't think they're really organized by like when I read them. I know that A False Report, A True Story of Rape in America is an all-time fave. All the truth is out. Hmm. I really want to reread it, but honestly, I stand by it. A Tale for the Time Being. I'd probably say it's good, but I don't know if I read it now if it would make it into my favorites list, honestly. And I think it also depends on like what kinds of books I was reading that year. If I didn't read a lot of fiction books, then when I made my fiction favorites list, some things that maybe some other years wouldn't have made it so far up the list, make it up the list. Um, Bad Blood, I stand by it. Beautiful Ruins, I kind of want to reread. I just saw that Jess Walter is coming out with a new book this year. I read that a long time ago, like 2015. I feel like I would be a, a little bit more critical of it now. Becoming by Michelle Obama, I stand by it. Becoming Unbecoming, I stand by it. The Blood of Emmett Till, Honestly, I stand by it, even though I do understand kind of the qualms of this book. Bloom? Hmm. It's good, but I don't know. I feel like when I made my list last year, 2019, I had so many books on that list because I did not make videos for like half the year. And therefore, I felt like I wanted to talk about all of these books that I didn't talk on my channel because I wasn't making videos. And that's why I made my 2019 favorite so long. I'm just gonna say it's good, but Born a Crime, I stand by it. Catch and Kill, I stand by it. I feel like a lot of them are gonna be I stand by it. Clyde Colvin, Twice for Justice is an all-time fave. I would definitely recommend that you read it. It is a middle grade nonfiction. It's a book that talks about Clyde Colvin who uh, refused to get up from her seat on the bus before Rosa Parks did. And there's a lot of women that did that before Rosa Parks. Rosa Parks, it was literally like a planned civil disobedience. Claudette Colvin's not so much. There's a lot of information about like why civil rights leaders didn't want her to be like the person leading the charge. And they needed someone with a spotless record like Rosa Parks to be the icon. Columbine, I would say it's an all-time fave. I understand that this book isn't perfect. I, I don't think I gave it five stars, but it's such a critical book in my nonfiction reading that like showed me that nonfiction could be really compelling and not like academic and bogged down in details but that's why I think it's an all-time fave. Dead Mountain also an all-time fave. Uh, this book literally gave me nightmares. It's also one that I would really like to reread but it's such a fascinating account. If you like books about hiking like if it's in air I totally recommend it. Destiny of the Republic I stand by it. This is a book about the assassination of Andrew Garfield and it's a really fascinating like medical account of what was done at the time so I, th I think it's really interesting. Um, the epic fail of Arturo Samura, I would say it's good, but really good, especially how it talks about gentrification and like standing up for your community, but I don't know if it's a favorite favorite or if I stand by it as a favorite for that year. Um, Escape from Syria is an all-time fave. This is getting really mumbled and jumbled, but I'll just keep going up and down. <laughs> Evicted, I would say, is an all-time fave, even though it was hard for me to get into once I was into it. I was into it. And again, it's one of those like Columbine that's such a 
an important piece of nonfiction for like my nonfiction development as a reader. So yes, I really love it. A fire story, I would say I stand by it. Um, front desk, I would say I stand by it. Gender queer, I would say it's good, but just because it's really interesting because I've never read an account from someone who's gender queer and it's so visceral. But at the same time, I don't think it's a super super favorite. Ghetto side, I have reread this year and I would say I stand by it but it's no longer an all-time fave. And this is kind of like a discussion that I have with myself in my brain of if I reread all of these favorites, like these favorite non-fictions, would I like them less? And that makes me sad because Ghetto Side was like the epitome of what got me into non-fiction. Uh, I read it the first non-fiction November that I participated in and it kind of changed my reading and my channel, period. But upon rereading it, I didn't love it as much, so. I'm kind of scared to reread the ones that are in all-time faves. Ghost by Jason Reynolds, I would say I stand by it. The Glass Castle, I would say, honestly, I kind of say I take it back because it has not stuck with me. I don't know, I don't think about it. I feel like I put it in my favorites partly because it's like so many people's favorites and it was a good nonfiction book that I read that year, but I don't know if it's a favorite. Um, Goldie Vance, I would say, is I stand by it. Close to an all-time fave. Good Talk by Mira Jacob, that's an all-time fave. We know it, you know it, I know it. Um, Guts by Raina Telgemeier, I would say it's good, but I put way too many graphic novels in my 2019 favorites. And I think again, it's because there were so many that I didn't get to talk about because I just wasn't making videos. But that's my own darn fault. Heroin, I would say, honestly, I kind of say I take it back, honestly. It's a good book, it's a four-star book. But is it a favorite? I think it had to do with also how many fiction books that I read that year. So it's kind of the same thing as some of the other fiction books on here. If I don't read very many fiction books, how is it possible so many of them are going to rise to the top? Just because there's just not very many to compare it to. Whole Master Dark, I would say I stand by it. I really love that book. Um, Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince, I would say all-time fave. It is my favorite Harry Potter book. Into Thin Air is an all-time fave for sure. Was there American Dream, I would say I take back honestly. It's kind of between it's good but and I take it back, but I feel like overall I take it back. I didn't feel like it went into depth as much as I usually like my graphic memoirs to go into depth. It has a lot of interesting conversations about microaggressions, but I feel like I take it back. Jonesy, I take back. Um, this is when I first started getting into graphic novels. I think I put this in my like 2015 or 2016. It's a really funny graphic novel, but I think I tried the second volume and I didn't get into it. And this has been long forgotten. I, I've, I don't remember talking about this in the past few years. So I take it back. Sorry, Jonesy. Just Mercy by Brian Stevenson is definitely an all time fave. Kid Gloves by Lucy Nicely. I would say I stand by it. Really like that book. Kindred, I would say, is an all-time fave. It's an all-time fave adult fiction book because it showed me that I really like suspenseful fiction, ones that genre bend really well, and if it has like history like this one does. So for a fiction, as you can tell, there's barely any fiction in the all-time fave list, but for a fiction, I think it's up there. Either that or I stand by it. So let's see how it settles there. Know My Name by Chanel Miller, I would say, I stand by it. Not a favorite favorite of all time, all time, but she writes very well. Laura Dean keeps breaking up with me. I would say I stand by it. Lincoln and the Bardo, I take it back. What was I thinking? It's one of those books that I really struggled. And again, uh, buddy read. I feel like whenever I do buddy reads, it usually goes um, me not being as into the book as I want to be but like trying really hard to get into it. I think the experience of buddy reading also like elevates a book onto your favorites list sometimes. I feel like if I read that book now, I would give it three stars. Lock and Key, I need to reread honestly. It's one of the first graphic novel series that I got into and I loved it. I literally sped through all six volumes like right away, but I haven't reread it. I feel like the art style after reading so many other different things and seeing so many different styles, I wouldn't be as much as in love with the art style. Also, I haven't seen the, the TV show that came of it either. My Prime Murders, I say all time fave. Honestly, probably the best mystery, adult mystery I've read. 
and I would like to read more things like it. If you have recommendations, please leave a comment down below. The March series is an all-time fave. That's so easy. Um, again, one of those books that really changed the way that I read and got me into graphic histories and graphic memoirs and graphic nonfiction in general. Matilda by Roald Dahl is an all-time fave. That book is the best. Um, Mouse, I stand by it. I don't think it's an all-time fave, but I stand by it. It's a very important book to me. The Miscalculations of Lightning Girl for a middle grade book is an all-time fave. And we'll see, I need to read more and this might change, but right now it's an all-time fave middle grade book. My Brilliant Friend by Elena Fronte, I stand by it. And with that one, I should also do, let's see if I can spot it, The Story of a New Name. I also stand by it. I have not read any more in the series. My Friend Anna, I would say it's good, but... It was one of those books that I read so quickly, I literally devoured, but it has some problems. My Time Among the Whites, I would say, I could not say it's an all-time fave. I keep thinking about that book since I finished it like three months, four months ago, and I definitely want to reread it. The New Jim Crow, I stand by it. It was not an easy book to read, like the style and the content. Um, it's definitely a more academic text that I could see being taught more than just like read for fun. For nonfiction reading, it was one that had been on my list for a really long time, so and I really enjoyed it, so I stand by it. Normal People. Hmm. This is between like All Time Fave and I Stand By It, but I think I'm going to put it in I Stand By It because I know that it's not a perfect novel and I would like to reread it, maybe even listen to it this next time. But again, one of those adult fiction books that I read very quickly and I felt so involved with the characters, even though they're not great to people. Um, the 100 Nights of Hero, I would say it's good, but yeah, I haven't read any more Isabel Greenberg, I feel like, I like her illustration style. This book is a lot about female empowerment, which I liked. It didn't stick with me that much and I read it a few years ago. On the come up, I would say I stand by it. Um, Outlander? I say I take it back. It's kind of between I need to reread and I take it back, but I don't want to reread it, so it was a struggle for me to finish that book. I really enjoyed the TV show. I watched like the first two seasons, but then I fell off the wagon and I just didn't care about it anymore. It's got its own problems. We we all know. Persepolis is definitely an all-time fave. It, again, like March, like a book that changed the way I think about graphic novels and like graphic nonfiction. Quiet Girl in the Noisy World, I would say I stand by it, but it's not an all-time fave. Um, I read it at a time when I really needed like cute things and that was very cute. Reading with Patrick, I say I stand by it. Rebecca by Daphne du Maurier is an all-time fave, for sure. Um, Rx by Rachel Lindsay is a graphic nonfiction book, and I would say I stand by it. It's pretty good. Sabrina, I also stand by it, honestly. Um, not an all-time fave, but I stand by that weirdness that was that book. Sadie is an all-time fave. I feel like I've been trying to replicate the feelings that I got with Sadie ever since I read it. I want to read more books like it. Again, not a perfect book, one that I rated probably four, four and a half stars, but it's got, it's cemented like a place in my brain. And I think that's why I think about it so much. And that experience that I had was so like, ah, I was frantic reading that book. <laughs> Salvage the Bones by Jasmine Ward. I would say it's good, but um, this is a book, again, that was kind of like a booktube darling and I really wanted to read. I really enjoyed the way that like Kirk and Katrina was depicted here and I really felt like I understood the characters very well. I feel like Jasmine Ward's just not like my favorite author. I would like to be really into her books, but her style is just not like 100% my style. I think that's all it is. Savage Appetite, I would say it's good, but um, that book is a lot, okay? <laughs> the Second Summer of the Sisterhood, Sisterhood from the Sisterhood of the Traveling Pants, I would say is an all-time fave. I literally cried reading that book. I, it was just so special for me. And this is coming from someone that like owned the series for the longest time in high school and just never read them and was never into them and then read them as an adult and really loved them and really didn't expect to love them. That's the thing. I was reading like really bad YA at the time that I didn't connect with. But this series I really connected with and I really enjoy. Next, She Said, which came out last year, I would say I stand by it. Something New by Lucy Nicely is probably the most important Lucy Nicely book that I've read for like my, of all the books that I've read by her, which I've read them all. It was a very important graphic 
memoir for me as well that made me be like i need to read more graphic memoirs i just love reading about people's real lives in graphic format uh so you've been publicly shamed i would say i stand by it but i also feel like i need to reread it i feel like i'll leave it in i need to reread it's a book that really like impacted me because it was kind of like taking something from the internet and really digging deep into it and i found that fascinating but i feel like i feel like maybe i wouldn't like the narrative style i wouldn't like ron johnson's like storytelling skills rereading it i don't know i have to reread it um stitches by david small again an all-time fave a graphic memoir that like changes the way that i think about the genre he is such a masterful illustrator and his style like the way he draws lines and the way that his books look i want to find more like it home after dark is another book he's he's done and that one's fiction and that one is is in i stand by it and i read that one before I read Stitches, but I literally read Stitches a few weeks after because I just needed more David Small in my life. This stuff is really good. The Storied Life of AJ Freakery, I would say, is an all-time fave. It's a really good adult fiction book that kind of brought me from like my YA reading as a teenager into like my adult reading in my early 20s. Uh, Strange Birds by Celia Perez, I would say it's good, but I, I probably shouldn't have been on my favorites list. It's a great middle grade book about friendship and a summer of activities, but I don't know if it should have been on my favorites list. The 57 Bus, I would say I stand by it. It's a very good nonfiction look at a crime. Yeah, but not an all-time fave. This one hurts. Um, hurts. <laughs> the Absolutely True Diary of a Part-Time Indian by Sherman Alexi before he fell from his pedestal. So it's one of those that I kind of want to say I take back, but it's also a really important book to me that I would say I stand by it, like just the text, not the author, trying to separate those two, even though it's really hard. So I think that's where I'll put it for now. The Circuit was a, such an important book to me when I read it a few years ago. I would definitely would put it in my all-time faves. It was the first time that I truly felt like I found my family dynamic, my immigrant family dynamic in a book. Even though going into it, I wouldn't have expected that because this is a book set in the 20th century and it's about farmers and like my family weren't farmers, but just like the little things of the kid going to school and his experiences, like his everyday life experiences made me, reminded me of coming to this country. The first time that I truly saw like mirrors reflected, you know, and that's why it's an all-time fave. It's a really short book too if you haven't read it and if you're looking for more Latinx reads. The Female of the Species, I would probably say is an all-time fave, even though I know it's not a perfect book. Again, a very important book, kind of like Sadie is in like the YA sphere of showing me like gritty and like messed up teen girls who are just like fucking shit up. And that's what I loved about The Female of the Species. It is not pretty, and neither is Sadie. The Flintstones, I really liked. I stand by it. It was a really fun book if you like satire and if you like graphic novels. Definitely pretty good. The Girls by Emma Klein, it's one of those that I need to reread. But I'm, I'm scared that I won't like it as much. Again, always trying to find a book that's like the girls in its description of girlhood. If you have recommendations for that, please let me know in the comments. I would put it in all-time fave though. And The Hunger Games by Suzanne Collins, I would say I stand by it. It's not an all-time, all-time fave, but it still holds up. Honestly, it's still good. The Immortal Life of Henrietta Luck, I would say I stand by it. Very good nonfiction book. The Only Plane in the Sky is a new all-time fave as of a few months ago. And The Poet X, I would say I stand by it. As you can see, I didn't put her second book on this, on any of my favorites list, even though I read it. I didn't love her second book. Her third book just came out, so we'll see if that one ends up in a favorites list. But The Poet X also, like The Circuit, had moments of like, I saw my family experience, my Latinx family experience on pages and I, I really valued that especially how it talks about like religion and how girls are treated in a family versus boys i found that very relatable honestly the vegetarian i stand by it i kind of want to put it in all-time fave but i stand by it i guess that's where i'm gonna put it the wild robot i stand by it that's a good one this one summer is an all-time fave and it will always be an all-time fave i have reread it 
it's not as perfect as the first time I read it, but it's a book that got me back into reading in 2015 and was so important to me. I saw myself as a teen girl in this book and how like moody you are and you're just not a great person <laughs> when you're when you're that age. To dance, I would put in It's Good But. I wish it was longer. I wish it did give you a little bit more, but I thought that it was worth my time and it, it taught me something about a new place. So that was fascinating to me. Tonight Out from Dogfish is an all-time fave middle grade book. It was really special. Um, train wreck, I would say I stand by it, but I also feel like I need to reread it. And I I really enjoyed my audiobook experience, so that's how I would want to reread it. But I feel like I could see how it wouldn't be as perfect this time around. And I read it I believe like 2016, so it's been quite a while. So I'll put it in, I need to reread. Violated, I would say I stand by it. It is a very good nonfiction book about sexual assault on college campuses and it focuses on Baylor University. It's very fascinating. I'm looking at Title IX and looking at like Title IX versus criminal proceedings and very aggravating as books like that usually are. The War That Saved My Life is definitely an all-time favorite. I really enjoy that book. We Were Feminist Once, I would say is an all-time favorite. It's a book that really changed how I thought about feminism and how I thought about the way that I think about feminism and how I perform feminism. So it's a really fascinating book. We're not great <laughs> as humans, just in general, we mess up all the time. And as feminists, we need to keep being better. A few left. What the Heart Knows, it's a poetry collection. Honestly, I stand by it. It's a really good poetry collection. I read it when I was really down and it's a very inspirational. It wants you to find your inner like lion's roar and I really valued that. I really like the wordplay and it had really beautiful illustrations too. When Breath Becomes Air, I would say, I would say it's good, but it's kind of one of those like books that you know you're gonna cry because of like the result, the conclusion, the sadness that comes from that. But I think like the book before the conclusion is what makes me put it in its good but. Like there's just something about it that it's not a I stand by it or right all time fave. Where'd you go Bernadette is an all time fave. I think this is the only book that's ever made me like laugh out loud for multiple minutes ever. While the city slept, I would say and I stand, I put it in I stand by it very good true crime and might look at mental health too it's really fascinating and wish tree i would also put it in stand by it i really like that book okay that is all so 32 so about one third ended up in all-time fave 40 are in i stand by it 12 and it's good but four and i need to reread and one, two, three, four, five, six, and I take it back. So there's really not that many and I take it back. I hope that you enjoyed watching this tear maker video. And if you have read any of these or would like to read any of these or have something to say about any of these, let me know in the comments. I will see you in my next video. Bye-bye.